Welcome to the 2021 Mathematical Olympiads Awards Ceremony. I'm Dr. Jennifer Quinn, President of the Mathematical Association of America. It's my great pleasure to welcome you as we join in celebration of the mathematical accomplishments of the amazing students and teachers with us this evening. This year looks and feels a little different. Although we may be physically distant tonight, there's one thing that brings us together, our love of mathematics. The students and teachers we are honoring tonight have displayed tremendous mathematical talent throughout the year. This talent is fueled by true dedication, but also by an absolute passion for math. And standing behind each one of our honorees is a parent, a teacher, a mentor, a coach, or supporters in the community among many others. Thank you and welcome for your unending support. All of us are here tonight gathering in celebration of the accomplishments of the next generation of mathematicians. And I'm pleased to announce that because of this virtual format, we will be honoring a larger group than in previous years. I see here tonight, of course, our Olympiad medalists which include 13 students who are the USA Mathematical Olympiad winners and the Robert P. Bayless Mathematical Olympiad prize winners. The 13 international Olympiad team made up of six student medalists and the European girls Mathematical Olympiad team comprised of four outstanding women. We are also honoring several other high achieving groups from the MAA Mathematical, uh, from the MAA American Mathematics competition tonight. I'd like to welcome over 840 young women in mathematics certificate and prize winners, as well as the dedicated group of 20 teachers who are recipients of the Edith May Slife Award. The MAA's American Math Competition, which I will call the AMC, leads the nation in strengthening the mathematical capabilities of the next generation of problem solvers. Through classroom resources and friendly competition, the Mathematical Association of America AMC program helps America's educators identify talent and foster a love of mathematics. The MAA AMC program positively impacts the analytical skills needed for future careers in an innovative society. Let me remind everyone tonight about the journey that brought each and every one of these students here. The American Mathematics Competition are a series of examinations and curriculum materials that build problem solving skills and mathematical knowledge in middle and high school students. The MAA AMC program has more than 300,000 middle and high school participants from over 6,000 schools around the world. The competition includes four stages of advancement with approximately 5,000 students invited to participate in the American Invitational Mathematics exam called the AMI, 400 students competing in the USA Mathematical Olympiad, the USAMO, and the US team that competes and medals in the European Girls Math Olympiad and the International Mathematical Olympiad. The students who are with us tonight are the top performers in the AMC program. So let's pause for a minute and give them a welcome round of applause. As the program gets started tonight, I would like to, send a, to extend a thank you to those who provide strong leadership to keep the MAA AMC program going. We have with us tonight, Bela Bainok, who is the MAA AMC Director of Competitions, you will be hearing from him a little later this afternoon. Jen Barton is the MAA AMC Director of Competitions Operations, 
who tirelessly works throughout the year coordinating the program. Po Shen Lo is here as well. Po is the national coach of the MAA's USA International Mathematical Olympiad team. He is also holding another session at MathFest this week on Thursday, speaking on what happens if you've been thinking about graph theory and probability and you're called to action to fight COVID. And I'd like to recognize the executive director of MAA, Michael Pearson. Please join me in thanking these folks, as well as our generous supporters, for their dedication to supporting all our students who participate in the AMC program. We have a special guest here tonight who is a familiar face with our AMC audience. I want to extend a warm welcome to the United States Congressman, Congressman Representative Jerry McNerney of California's 9th District. Over the years, he has regularly spent time with students who are presenting their mathematics research at our conferences. Representative McNerney started similarly to you. In his studies, he earned a PhD in mathematics, which launched a career in engineering, working in wind power and clean energy, helping to lessen the carbon footprint we leave on this world. He was elected to Congress in 2007 and has dedicated 14 years in the U.S. House of Representatives. He currently serves on the Committee on Energy and Commerce and is proud to be a member of the House Committee on Science, Space, and Technology. Congressman, would you share a few words with us? Well, thank you. Uh... Dr. Quinn, I really appreciate the introduction. I want to thank the MAA for inviting me uh, to join you all today and congratulations to everyone. You know, I was just listening in for the last half hour and it was so fun uh, to hear the stories of young mathematicians tell their stories. And of course they seem young to me, but uh, mathematics is something that you can carry with you your entire life. And I know you've all worked very hard to master these problems that have been presented to you today in the last few days. And I hope it's been a really fun experience. Math has always been my passion. I see it everywhere from describing the physical universe to modeling biological systems. Math is used to protect the stock market, to encrypt important and secret materials. It's even used to generate artificial intelligence. So for all of these reasons and so many more, I consider mathematics to be a universal tool. And it's a very special thing about being able to prove something with absolute certainty. You can't do that anywhere else. But beyond its practical applications, math sharpens your mind and opens doors to new opportunities. For me, this meant getting a PhD in differential geometry and then using the math tools that I learned to harness the power of wind as a clean and sustainable energy source. Well, in Congress, I'm the only PhD mathematician. And I'm able to look at some of the challenges from a different perspective than most of my colleagues and introduce new legislative ideas to tackle some of our most pressing problems, such as climate change. And again, I want to congratulate all of you for your hard work and your achievements. I got my start in mathematics in high school geometry class. I love my teacher. He made an incredible impact on my entire life. Uh, and I hope a lot of you have that experience, both as students and as instructors, to reach out to, to the young generation and uh, give them an appreciation and a love for mathematics that we all share. Well, I hope this experience has helped deepen your understanding and love of math because there's an intrinsic beauty in math. And I know that all of you will appreciate this throughout your entire lives. Thank you for the opportunity to speak today. Thank you, Representative McNerney. It, it is a real honor to have you speak to us and these students. At this time, it's my pleasure to introduce tonight's keynote speaker. I welcome to the screen the President's Science Advisor and Director of the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy, OSTP. I'm talking about Dr. Eric Lander the first OSTP director in US history to serve in the president's cabinet. Dr. Lander is a biologist and mathematician. 
He has been a leader in scientific research, in building scientific communities, and in public policy. I'm proud to say that he was a student on the very first US IMO team. So he has been in the shoes of our winners when he was in high school. From 1990 to 2004, Dr. Lander was one of the principal leaders of the Human Genome Project, which helped unlock breakthroughs in genetics for medicine and health. Following the Human Genome Project, Dr. Lander founded and led the Broad Institute at MIT and Harvard, which focuses on innovations and applications in genomic medicine. For decades, Dr. Lander has played a key role in ensuring high standards in forensic science, with his early efforts helping lead to founding of Project Innocence, of the Innocence Project, which has helped exonerate hundreds of wrongfully convicted people in the United States. For eight years of the Obama-Biden administration, Dr. Lander served as co-chair of the President's Council of Advisors on Science and Technology. Just this past May, he was confirmed into his current position leading the OSTP. Dr. Lander is here today to speak to you the next generation of mathematicians. If you have any questions you'd like to ask Dr. Lander, he is saving a few minutes of his address time at the end. So without further ado, please welcome Dr. Eric Lander. Hello, hello. Dr. Quinn, thank you so much. Um, I'm saving more than a few minutes of my address time because I would love to answer questions and so I'll make some opening remarks. The first thing I wanna say though is what a cool thing to appear together with Representative, Representative McNerney. Um, he is the only PhD mathematician in the US Congress. And I'm the only PhD mathematician in the president's cabinet. So it's really cool to appear on a, on a virtual stage together and as he told you, he got his PhD in differential geometry. I got my PhD in algebraic combinatorics. And I'm going to guess that neither of us imagined we would be doing what we are doing today, working in government. But maybe it's not so completely surprising because the same way that Representative McNerney um, got his love of mathematics in high school, um, solving problems. I got my love of mathematics in high school, solving problems as well. And what do we do in the world? And what are we doing in Washington? What are we doing around the country? We're all trying to solve problems. And I think the remarkable skills you learn solving problems in mathematics teach a discipline of thinking that really helps when you try to solve problems in many, many other settings. So um, as Dr. Quinn said, I was on the first ever International Math Olympia. And I don't know, maybe some of you will want to, to hear some stories about that. And I'm happy to relate what it was like when the US had never sent students over. And this whole thing was just a, a much more nascent operation. Um, but I got to say first, I am so thrilled to see what this has become. To have on this Zoom, not just the students who, who represented this country and did it so well in the um, International Mathematical Olympiad and were winners of the USA Mathematical Olympiad, but I'm incredibly excited for something we didn't have back in 1974, which was to have a US team performing so remarkably in the European Girls Mathematical Olympiad, EGMO. And I'm really excited this year that we have 845 uh, 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 women, young women who have received certificates of excellence in MAA competitions because What's different today is 
the circle of people who are involved in mathematics, the breadth of people has expanded so much. And I gotta say that matters tremendously. Um, it is one of the things that gives me hope about this country that you are all doing things like this. I'll issue a brief congratulations, but what I really want to issue is the expectation that all of you are going to bring the skills that you now know you have, the skills that you have displayed, gained confidence in, to bear on things in the world. And some of you will be PhD mathematicians and you will go on to teach mathematics, but others of you will go on to work in mathematical fields. Um, you'll, you'll, you will work in computer science and related fields, but others of you, and you don't know who yet, because the really interesting thing about careers is there are all of these amazing accidents that happen along the way. Some of you will end up bringing your skills to medicine. You'll bring your skills to all sorts of kinds of engineering and to climate change and to other problems we have in the world and to bringing the math to building quantum computers and other kinds of computers we haven't thought about yet. Um, some of you will bring your skills to public service, to solving many, many challenges that will help thousands of people or in some cases, millions of people by bringing your math skills or clear thinking skills. And I think I want to emphasize, and this is something Poshun Lowe and I talked about, and I just have enormous admirations for Dr. Lowe, that you all have really great responsibilities. Um, I, at, at your stage, did not realize what an amazing entree mathematics was to, to so many things. And I found in just in my own career, many places where it could make a difference in the world, certainly in the world of genomics, DNA sequencing. Um, when, when we started reading out the sequence of the human genome, I think at the beginning, people didn't realize the hardest part was it was a huge math problem to assemble all those fragments of letters. When I got involved, it was sort of totally by accident in that innocence project that Dr. Quinn mentioned, a lot of that was bringing rigorous mathematics to being able to analyze data that were being presented in the criminal courts and not very well, I have to say, not with the rigor of mathematicians. At some point, I got involved in writing amicus briefs to the Supreme Court on things like gerrymandering, when the justices were asking, well, were there ways that you could detect whether an apportionment of districts was fair? And it turns out the best way to do that is, is with mathematics, with large scale simulation. You never know where these things will turn up, but your responsibility now is, is to be there and, and jump up and, and provide those skills, whether it's in health or climate or law or anything else. So I am thrilled that some of you are doing this already, starting groups in your hometown, uh, in Brookings, South Dakota, and San Antonio, Texas, and St. Louis, Missouri, and, and you know, just to make mathematics and science education more accessible. We are gonna need in the coming decades to draw so many people in and I am glad you are doing it. Again, my hat's off to Coach Potion Lowe, who I think I find is a tremendous inspiration. And um, I'm happy to talk about whatever is on your mind, um, but you all should be thinking now about what, what remarkable paths lie ahead. And um, I'll just say, whatever an opportunity arises, just take it. I've never regretted when, when something comes up, raising my hand and, and getting involved. And I hope you will do that. If, I don't have a lot of lessons to live by, but that's certainly one of them. So Dr. Quinn, let's take questions because I want to hear what's on, on people's minds. All right. So please write your questions in the comments. And while we're waiting for those to, to arrive, I have a few that came in ahead of time. Oh, cool. So um, I love this question. 
if you could give your younger self one piece of advice, what would it be? <laughs> so um, I would not give my younger self one piece of advice at all. That's the answer. Because I feel like most of what's been wonderful about my career has been lucky accidents, meeting people in, in random ways. I got into biology because of a conversation in a hallway, or into the Human Genome Project, because of a conversation in a hallway. Um, you know, the only, the only rule I've had is, is, you know, be willing to throw yourself into things. And I think if somebody gave me advice, there's a real risk I'd have followed it. And it turns out, you know, that would have channeled me in some direction or another. And I think the most exciting things in careers have not been invented at the time you're asking these questions. When you're in your teens and early 20s and you say, what should I be doing? I know the answer. The answer is something that hasn't been invented yet. It's going to be an accident. So I guess if I had to give advice, it was pay attention to, to lucky accidents. Seize lucky accidents. Don't be shy about doing it. But anything more precise than that, I would shy away from because I don't think I, I, I could have chosen as well as, as the accidents that have happened in my career. You know, even including ending up working in the White House, uh, you know, for President Biden, who I, I actually just came from now and I mentioned where I was going. So hi from him. Um, it's pretty cool. All right. I have one more question here I want to ask, and then I'm going to go to the questions in the comments. But um, who are your mathematical heroes? Are there any mathematicians that you look up to? Well, I... I look to the next generation. Um, you know, you look back to old heroes or something like that. But I, I think, you know, Mariam um, Mirzakhani. Um, I think Terry Tao. You know, I think Melanie Wood. I think, I think people like that. Those are the people I look up to because those are the people who are carrying the, the torch forward. And that's really the most important thing is, is I look to the next generation. And I already see amazing leaders. Excellent. Thank you. So um, Hope asks, how does it feel knowing you've had such a massive impact on health sciences with the Genome Project? Oh, goodness. Well, the one thing I know is that I didn't, we did. The great thing about the Genome Project, it was thousands of people working together. Um, it was a project that involved 16 different centers in six countries around the world. It involved Fridays at 11 a.m. having conference calls amongst the, the largest little labs coordinating things. And so I think what, what was most important to me was getting to be part of something larger than any of us. And yes, that has made a huge difference. We went from a world where we couldn't read out the genetic code, those three billion letters or of, of human DNA, to a world where it's on your iPhone. Not only that, we know the genetic variation in that. Any common genetic variation that's more than 1% in the population, you can find that on your phone too. Um, and so we went from a world where we didn't know the data to the world where the data is just ubiquitous and it, it went from it being 13 years of work to squeeze out the data to now all the fun is analyze the data. It's become a mathematical problem. So, um, so mathematicians are pouring into it. Um, so it's great to be part of it. I think maybe there's another nice lesson there too, which is, you know, you never fully do anything alone. Find good communities of people to work with because doing things together Frankly, it's more impactful and it's more fun. I couldn't agree more. Uh, I have to say MAA is my community of people and they're great. So uh, I love this question from Gopal. Um, what's your opinion about young mathematicians going into pure mathematics research? Is that somewhat of a waste of talent that could be used working on more concrete problems? No, absolutely not. Um, the, the right thing to work on is what you're passionate about. We need pure mathematics. Pure mathematics is utterly critical. Um, 
you know, where does our best applied cryptography come from? It comes from prime factorization. Uh, it's really important if we didn't actually understand number theory in real depth. And I don't just mean basic number theory. I mean algebraic number theory. If, if we didn't have those sort of things, we wouldn't have the cryptography we have today. And I could go on in, in 10, 20 examples of where pure mathematics is foundational. But I'm not saying you should do pure mathematics because there are other contributions that come in all sorts of other flavors, applied mathematics, whatever. Anytime anybody tells you work on X or Y or Z, they're wrong. Work on what you're passionate about because that's what drives progress is something that makes you want to stay up at night or get up in the middle of the night with an idea that came in your head and struggle with a problem. You've already gotten the experience of struggling with a problem on an Olympiad uh, challenge. Well, real problems are like that too, except, except nobody has an answer key. And so when you learn how to struggle with those, um, that's, that's what it's about. So I think the passion that sustains you, you should pick the thing you love. And what's great about the world is the probability distribution distributes people into all the buckets, the pure mathematics buckets and the computer science buckets and some applied buckets and other things. So up to you. I hope we have time for one more question. Oh, no, no, no. I'm happy to do a, to a couple. And at some point, you should ask me about 1974 because it was such a weird experience. But I'm happy to take a couple more questions. I, I mean, it's so meaningful to me to be here with with such an amazing group of, of people who I've already told have heavy, heavy responsibility to, to use their skills, that I might as well hang out with them a bit and talk. Well, this one comes from uh, one of our medalists. Uh, Luke asks, how do you think the mathematicians of the next generation can have the biggest positive impact on the political world by advising politicians or running for offices themselves? I think it's a personality thing. I think some people can run for office. Um, I think other people can be great advisors. And I think you have to look look inside yourself. Um, you know, we should get Rep Representative McNerney back to talk about, you know, the extraordinary work that goes in to uh, running for office. Um, you know, uh, I've, I've talked to a couple of scientists in Congress and they say, you have to say the same thing again and again and again to make it really stick and sink in. And some people can do that. And you have to be able to put yourself out there and risk that you might lose. And some people can do that. Other people don't want to do that. Um, advising politicians. Well, totally different kind of thing. You have to be able to boil things down to their essence take complex problems and boil them to their essence without losing the point, without oversimplifying or trivializing. I think there are a hundred different ways to have an impact, a positive impact on the world. I think, I think um, you know, in the current pandemic, mathematicians have stepped up with models and climate change. Oh my goodness, you know, we don't have big enough computers to run the deterministic algorithms we want to run. So people are stepping up with machine learning to pick up factors of a thousand or a million on calculations. There are so many ways to make concrete change in the world. Find what you're passionate about, find what, what you feel good about doing. Um, if I'm leaving you with any message here, it's there is no specific path you're supposed to follow. You're supposed to make your own path. Uh, my students would ask me, you know, how do I how do I find my you know how do I punch my ticket at all the things along the way? Well, you don't. All the interesting careers I know come from people being themselves. Don't try to be anybody else. Try to be the best version of yourself. And when you get the confidence to do that, and it's hard. I mean, when I when I left pure mathematics, algebraic combinatorics to drift into biology, I felt really insecure. 
I felt maybe I was deserting my PhD advisor and maybe he'd be disappointed by that. It took me another decade or two to really connect back up and find out he was thrilled I'd gone and done that. And all my worrying about was it okay to, to sort of move from pure mathematics wasn't any problem to him. So you, you kind of have to find the confidence and you can't just find it yourself. You have to find it in a support network in people who are there to pick you up when it's hard. I mean, you know, it's so easy looking backwards on careers to imagine the trajectories were all very straightforward and easy. And that's because we tell biographies as if that happened. They're rocky and you're always in doubt and things like that. And, and you're following your instincts and, and it's okay. And I want you all to feel like that is the most exciting thing you could be doing is figure out a way to make a difference and just stick with it. I really am going to ask one more question. This one comes from Kevin, who says, what did it feel like to be on the pioneering first IMO team? And I'm oh. going to interpret that as, what was it like in 1974? Yeah. <laughs> well, you've got to imagine that in 1974, the, the International Mathematical Olympiad was an Eastern Bloc competition amongst the Soviet nations that had just begun to take Western nations. So I have to take you back to the Cold War, which for you is some chapter in a history textbook. But for me, as a student growing up in 1974, there was the Soviet Union and the United States, and the world was divided in, in, in blocks, and the, and the Soviets had organized this international mathematical Olympiad, and, and Western countries hadn't participated, and the, 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 the UK participated, and a few others participated, and a, a fabulous person, Nora Turner, she wrote an article saying, why can't the US participate in the International Mathematical Olympiad? And she lobbied for several years to start a USA Mathematical Olympiad to begin to identify people who might be on a team and then lobbied to get us go to go. And I was on this first team and we were invited down to the State Department, to the fancy dining room on the top floor for a send off by the US government to represent the US, and it was pretty tricky. I found out they were very worried that we would screw up and perform really poorly, and the United States would be embarrassed in this, in this competition. No pressure here. Um, and it also was complicated because I was a high school student, and we were being sent to East Germany a country with which we did not have diplomatic relations. And so um, many of our parents were not entirely secure with the idea that we were going to a country we didn't have diplomatic relations with. And um, it was very interesting. We went through, if you've ever seen these movies, Checkpoint Charlie. And on the first evening, we walked around and we saw the Berlin Wall from the east side, where there was a, a no man's land in front of the wall. And there were guard towers with guards pointing rifles down because they didn't want people to go from East Berlin to West Berlin. And then we went down to Erfurt in Southern Germany, and we got to meet all these teams from different countries. You know who we hung out with most and, and bonded with the most was the Soviet team. Because they were a superpower, we were a superpower, and they, they because they were the, the head of the Soviet bloc, they felt that, uh, you know, they could kind of do anything, and they wouldn't get in trouble. And so they said, hang out with us, and you won't get in trouble. And so we did things that probably we shouldn't have done. They involved throwing water balloons off buildings and other things. And... Um, it was, it was um, an amazing experience to meet people from these different teams and realize that notwithstanding the Cold War of the 1970s, young people doing mathematics in very different countries, in countries that had tensions between them, were kind of the same and had fun together and loved mathematics. And so um, 
Uh, it, it was an amazing, enlightening experience for me to, to see all of that. And I see in the chat, someone has noted, one of my teammates on that team, and not just teammates, one of my high school uh, teammates, because he and I were both on the same high school math team, Paul Zeitz, um, wrote a book, The Art and Craft of Problem Solving. And so Paul and I, you know, both were over there. And um, I will never forget that experience. Now, it turned out we did okay. You know, we came in second. Um, we, we came second to the Soviet Union and ahead of the Hungarian math team and Hungary as legendary mathematicians. And so the US breathed a sigh of relief that our math team, um, you know, did okay. And we just came back feeling like our eyes were open and we were part of an international community of mathematicians. And now I know an international community of scientists. And really, it's an international community of people devoted to solving problems. And God knows the world has a lot of problems to solve. And I think that's our highest calling is pick a problem and solve it. Anyway, Dr. Quinn, it is a pleasure to be here. I'm so excited. My only regret is I can't see everybody in person because, you know, it's a Zoom thing. Maybe it would be impossible to get 900 people together or so. But I, I, I long to see your faces and get to meet you and uh, read about what you're doing in the newspapers soon enough. So thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Lander, for your generosity with your time this evening. And perhaps we can invite you back to meet them in person uh, or with more faces showing. Uh, we would love to help facilitate that interaction. Um, you are an inspiration to the next generation of mathematicians. Uh, it is just fantastic to see how your dreams have turned to reality and are now inspiring the next generation. As we wrap up this first portion of tonight's events, I want to take a moment to recognize all of our sponsors. Uh, these awards would not be possible without your support and generous donations. So thank you to the Akamai Foundation, uh, the Army Educational Outreach Program, the Art of Problem Solving, AwesomeMathGirls.org, the Casualty Actuarial Society, Jane Street Capital, MathWorks, the Society for Industrial and Applied Mathematics, the TBL Foundation, the D.E. Shaw Group, Tudor Investment Corporation, Two Sigma, thank you. We are grateful for your support and for being here tonight to help us celebrate. back. We're now going to take a short five minute break and come back with the awards portion of our evening. Don't go away. Don't log out of the event. Stick around and we'll have a fun activity for you during the break. Uh, so please play along and we'll see you back in five minutes.
Hello, hello everyone. My name is Jennifer Barton and I am the Director of Competitions Operations here at the MAA. What an amazing discussion from Dr. Lander. I personally am expired and it's so excited for those accidental opportunities. Um, thank you so much for coming tonight and thank you to our wonderful competitions department. I'd be remiss if I didn't Thank Nicole and Mariam and Marcio. You guys rock and thank you for everything that you do. With this virtual platform, we thought we'd give everyone attending a chance to show off your skills tonight and play along. I have James Tanton here, who is going to share a math problem with you and work through the solution during our break. Listen carefully. You can use the session chat on the right to add your thoughts in the process. Thanks. See you in a bit after the break. What does it mean to do something as a problem-solving strategy? Well, let's think about it. In business and research, you're often solving problems that have never been seen before. In fact, the questions have never even been asked before. So there aren't techniques in the back of a book or even answers in the back of the book for you to look up to solve a problem. So what do you do if you come up with something that's completely foreign to you and completely unfamiliar? Well, my advice is just do something. It's not like strategy number one, where you kind of have a hint of what this topic is about. This can be about something brand new. Just do something. I don't care what it is. Draw a picture, draw a line, draw a picture of a tree. Just get going. Get past that initial emotional barrier. So let me show you how powerful this technique is. Here's a very simple problem. What I've drawn here is a pin, and a pin has a head and a tail. And here's my question. Juju arranged 10 pins in a loop and said that there were five places where a head and a tail met. Is she lying? This is a question that's nothing like any of the textbooks. I've never thought about this before. She put 10 of these pins in a loop, and apparently there are five places where a head and a tail met. Is she lying? OK, what can I do? Well, I'm just going to do something. I have no idea what to do. Well, I guess the appropriate thing to do is maybe draw a picture of 10 pins in a loop. Well, maybe not even 10. Let me just draw some. 10 feels like a lot. So I'll do something like this. Maybe they do have like a head and a head. Or maybe they have a tail and a tail. Uh, I don't know, I'll, just, I'll mix it up. I'm losing track of my count, but I don't even care because all I'm doing right now is just doing something. And look right now, I have a head-head pair, a tail-tail pair. Oh, there's where head and a tail meet. Head and a tail meet. Uh, the head and tail meets there. 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 One, two, three, four, five, six places where head and a tail meet. She had five places. Um, don't know what it's doing. I'm still just completely floundering. But I'll draw another picture. Maybe I'll draw a small picture, just maybe four of them, something like this. How's, how's that? Uh, head tail, head tail, two of them. In fact, I invite you, draw some more pictures, and I'll bet you'll find every time you do this, something's going on about the count of the head tail pairs. Two, six, hmm. So maybe getting five is indeed a lie. I've now got something to hold on to. My doing something has got me going on this problem. I feel there's a chance to, for me to really think about this properly now. A very powerful strategy. Just do something. Great. Thank you. Welcome back. Be in the right place, excuse me. Where's 12? Hi, everyone. No, it's Jen's turn to be back on stage. No, it's my turn to be on stage. <laughs> Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed our little friendly competition during the break. That was a great example of the type of hurdles the honorees here tonight have soared over making them the top middle and high school level mathematicians in our country and around the world. I hope you found it to be fun and a challenging activity. For the rest of the evening, we will be recognizing the students and teachers who have worked tirelessly for the past year. In this moment tonight, we honor you, your accomplishments, and all the hard work it took to get here today. Each of you has already received your awards individually and has been recognized in smaller groups, but tonight we assemble at MAA Math Fest as part of the world's largest community of mathematics educators, students, and enthusiasts. This is your night to shine because it all starts with math.
To begin our awards, I'd like to hand it back to Jen Barton, uh, the director of the competitions operations here at MAA AMC. Hello, thank you, Jenny. Thanks for that introduction. And I just wanna say, I love my job. I, I'm feeling so inspired this evening, inspired to be among the students and inspired to be among Dr. Lander and the House Representative. Um, I, I'm so excited that in my role, I get to unite my personal passion with my personal life. And we're inspiring students that are going to change the world. I say that to my team daily. Um, we're gonna change the world. We're gonna inspire young minds to continue their work in math and really put forward their efforts so that they can go into different fields such as the OSTP officer and truly change the world. Um, I love empowering students to excel and meet their full potential in math and in life. I couldn't do it without the support of teachers. A big part of what I do as the director of competition operations reaches beyond working with students. The problem solving skills and the mathematical knowledge these middle school and high school students hold are because of the support of teachers and mentors. The students here tonight have all participated in competitions run by their supporters. I have the pleasure tonight, the absolute heartfelt pleasure of honoring the 2020 winners of the Edith May Slife Awards for Distinguished Mathematicians Teaching in Middle School and High School. This National Education Prize is awarded annually to middle and high school mathematicians, teachers, for their outstanding work to motivate students through participating in the MAA AMC program. The Edith May Slife Award was established in 1989 with a bequest from the Slife Estate. Ms. Slife was a high school mathematician teacher in California for 36 years. She wanted to recognize the top math teachers for their contribution. Slife winners each received $500, and we lift up these 20 educators, these chain made change makers, whose work impacts not just today, but the future of mathematics. Help me in honoring the Edith May Slife Award winners.
Thank you and congratulations to all the teachers, mentors, coaches, parents, and others who have supported students in this journey. Hi, I'm Mira Desai and I'm the creator of Awesome Math Girls, an organization dedicated to making mathematics and problem solving more appealing to girls in middle and high school. I'm currently a student at Stanford University in California, and I've always appreciated and enjoyed the beautiful field of mathematics and math competitions, and want to help spread that passion, that love of math, and I avidly believe that all girls should love math and excel at it. The AMCs were my first introduction into exploring math beyond a school setting, and definitely the reason that I'm continuing to study math in college. It's easy to understand why I'm so excited to have been asked to present the MAA AMC's Young Woman in Mathematics Certificate Program and Awards. I was part of establishing that program just a couple years ago. The Mathematical Association of America continues to close the gender gap by celebrating 840 plus young women around the nation for their achievements in this year's a MAA AMCs. Tonight, 38 young women mathematicians are receiving awards and 807 are receiving certificates for participating in this program. The MAA AMC Awards and Certificate Program has seen tremendous success since its launch in 2019. This year, MAA was able to offer five times more funding to support and motivate young women in math with the help of new donors who have stepped up. Thank you to DE Shaw Group, Akamai Foundation, Jane Street Capital, and Two Sigma. The program's goal is to inspire young women around the world, around their love for math, promote a positive self-image, and strengthen confidence in their mathematical abilities. This, in turn, will help redefine gender stereotypes in and outside the classroom, as well as nourish young women's aspirations, better preparing them for future tech or STEM jobs. Please help me in congratulating this year's certificate and award winners.
Hello, hello again, and I hope you all enjoyed seeing our GCP winners. Um, I'm so proud of that program. Mira, thank you so much for your words and for your inspiration and for wanting to see the best in girls in mathematics. Um, this program started with Mira, and so we're so thankful for her and so thankful for our donors because now it's grown beyond what I could have imagined. Um, just a little side note, since we're live, Thank you to DJ because she is quickly moving behind the scenes to keep us on track. And I didn't realize I was up next. So thank you, DJ. Thank you for all the work you were doing. Um, now we'll be presenting the winners for the Mathematical Olympiad Awards. As Dr. Jenny Quinn mentioned at the beginning of the night, the Olympiad is a series of examinations that culminate with the International Mathematical Olympiad, the IMO. The first in this series is the AMC 8 or the AMC 1012. An American Invitational Mathematics exam is next, followed by the USA Mathematical Olympiad and the Junior Mathematical Olympiad, the USAMO and the USJMO. As Marcio, my colleague, says, the Yushmo and the Yushjupmo. <laughs> the top participants from the USA and JMO are invited to the Mathematical Olympiad program in the summer after the competition. Participants from the Mathematical Olympiad program are then eligible to be selected for the EGMO, the European Math Mathematical Olympiad, as well as the following summer's six-member team that will represent the United States of America at the International Mathematical Olympiad. So hope you kept up on those acronyms. There will be acronyms, there will be a quiz. Um, I'd like to take a minute to introduce my colleague, my partner, my friend, um, my neighbor when I'm in DC, he lives down the street from the office, my confidant. Um, I've had the pleasure of working with Bela Bashnak for the past three years now. We were new together in this role. We started together and we're still here together. So I think that says a lot. Um, Bela is the director of competitions operate, I'm sorry, Director of Competitions for the MAA AMC, overseeing this series of annual competitions that culminates in, in, in the International Mathematical Olympiad. He is a professor of mathematics at Gettysburg College. More than anything else, Bela loves teaching math. He has been recognized by the MAA with the Crawford Award for Distinguished College or University Teaching, and over the years has supervised the research for more than 300 students. Um, I'll turn it over to Bela to present the Mathematical Olympiad Award. Thank you and good evening. I'm Bela Boynok and I am the director of American Mathematics Competitions of the MAA. It is a real pleasure to be here tonight to present the highest awards we have at the MAA AMC program. Let's start with the USA Mathematical Olympiad winners. The USA Mathematical Olympiad was first started in 1972, which makes this year's competition the 50th. The idea of the USAMO actually started in the 1960s as Nura D. Turner worked to institute a USAMO and have an American team for the Iowa. Not getting much traction, she published an article in 1971 in the American Mathematical Monthly called, Why Can't We Have a USA Mathematical Olympiad? This inspired the revival of an Olympiad subcommittee, which voted to start the USMO. The MA later endorsed this proposal, and the first USMO took place on May 9, 1972. In today's USMO, students use their skills on the sixth question today nine-hour mathematical proof competitions. Top scorers are invited to join the year-long Mathematical Olympiad program to compete and train to represent the United States at the International Mathematical Olympiad. This year, 13 of the nation's finest young students qualified as a USA Mathematical Olympiad winner. Earning this distinction of honor is Daniel Hong, Skyline High School, Washington. Daniel Yuan, 
Montgomery Blair High School, Maryland. Eric Shen, University of Toronto Schools, Ontario. Gopal Goel, Krishna Hub Home School, Oregon. Jaden White, Archimedean Upper Conservatory, Florida. Kevin Kong, Phillips Exeter Academy, New Hampshire. Luke Robitel, Robitel Home School, Texas. Maxim Lee, Michigan State University, Michigan. Noah Walsh, Walsh Academy, Oregon. Wanlin Chen, Princeton International School of Math and Science, New Jersey. William Wong, West Windsor Plainsboro High School North, New Jersey. Xin Yang Chen, Glenda Dawson High School, Texas. And Tifan Wong, Princeton International School of Math and Science, New Jersey. Each of the students have already received the medal and the certificate. The MA is also pleased to announce that each of the USAMU winners additionally received the Robert P. Bowles USA Mathematical Olympiad Prize. Mr. Bowles is a lifelong student of mathematics and former two-year college mathematics instructor who established this award to recognize and reward high-achieving students of mathematics. Let's give a big round of applause for our USA Math Olympiad winners. The next portion of our program recognizes the achievements of young women in mathematics. The Mathematical Association of America supports the growth of the European Girls Mathematical Olympiad team through the American Mathematics Competitions program each year by selecting its team members from EMC participants. This spring, Team ESA participated in the European Girls Mathematical Olympiad and earned second place with each student also earning a gold medal for their individual performance. 
The ECMO is an international mathematics competition focused on gathering teams of four young women from countries around the world to engage in a two-day competition. Typically, this competition is held in rotating European countries. However, the 2021 competition was completely virtual due to the global health pandemic. It was much like the way we are gathered here tonight, except a lot more problem solving was going on. Participating in this year's virtual Olympiad, US team included young women in mathematics program participants. Serena Ann, EMC 12B prize winner. Yonseo Choi, EMC 12A certificate winner and EMC 12B certificate winner. Sanjana Das, EMC 12A certificate winner, and Jessica Wan, EMC 10A prize winner. This incredible team was led by equally impressive team leaders, Rachel Chang and Megal Gupta, who helped prepare the team as well as supported pre-competition engagements. We are so incredibly proud of our EGMO team and their win. It is wonderful to see that each member of our team was also a winner of the Young Women in Mathematics program. The MA is consistently working to celebrate the achievements of young women in mathematics and looks forward to recognizing more young women in the 2021-2022 AMC cycle and beyond. Let's give a huge round of applause to our EGMO team and all the talented young women winning, winning, winning awards. I'd like to recognize is the IMO team. As I mentioned, the Olympiads are progressive, culminating in the International Mathematical Olympiad, which is the World Championship Mathematics Competition for high school students. The first IMO was held in 1959 in Romania, with seven countries participating. The participation in this premier event has gradually expanded to over 100 countries, spanning five continents. Over the course of 60 years, there have been 18,369 students participating in the IMO. The IMO is held annually, each time hosted in a different country. The IMO is run similarly to the Olympic Games, which are happening right now in Tokyo, Japan. The national coach of the MAS USA International Mathematical Olympiad team is Poshan Lo. Poshan is now a professor at Carnegie Mellon University. In 2019, he developed a new method to solve quadratic equations, which quite possibly could be integrated into all mainstream curricula. More recently, he was the lead developer of a pandemic response app named NOBID, which utilizes a new way to mitigate the spread of contagious disease. He brings his tremendous expertise to the Math Olympiad program. This year's IMO took place just recently. We are delighted to learn that Team USA placed fourth overall with four gold and two silver individual medals. On Team USA, individual medals went to Luke Robitel, third place rank, gold medal. Zifan Wang, 24th place rank, gold medal. 
Maxim Lee, 32nd place rank, gold medal. Noah Walsh, 41st place rank, gold medal. Malin Chen, 53rd place rank, silver medal. And Ankit Bissain, 63rd place rank, silver medal. Let's congratulate the USA IMO team for their high ranking accomplishments. All three groups of Olympiads, the USMO, the EGMO, and the IMO teams have accomplished great success. These students have trained tirelessly and used their brilliant mathematical skills to perform such success. They are the top young mathematicians in our country and across the world. Please join me in congratulating all of our medalists and award winners of the Mathematical Olympiads. We just can't wait to see what the future holds for each of you. Congratulations to all the honorees of 2021 Mathematical Olympiad Award Program. This year was bigger and better than ever before. And that gives us hope and confidence in the potential the future holds for the mathematical sciences around the world. Closing out our program tonight, and as president of the Mathematical Association of America, it has been my great pleasure to host this award ceremony. Please join me one more time in a round of appreciation for tonight's honorees. And again, I want to thank our gracious donors and sponsors for their unwavering support. The MAAAMC program would not be possible without you. Thank you to the Akamai Foundation, the Army Educational Outreach Program, the Art of Problem Solving, AwesomeMathGirls.org, the Casualty Actuarial Society, Jane Street Capital, MathWorks, the Society for Industrial and Applied Mathematics, the TBL Foundation, the DE Shaw Group, Tudor Investment Corporation, and Two Sigma. In past years, honorees have participated in additional events and activities throughout the day leading up to the awards ceremony as part of the celebration. This year is no different. Everyone attending this event will also be able to participate in any of the MAA MathFest events offered throughout the rest of this week. There are 11 special sessions specifically for AMC honorees, teachers, and students through August 7th. Please sign back in each day and check out the MAA MathFest sessions, specifically those designed for our AMC audience.
I'm turning control back to Bela Bynock as I say thank you uh, to everyone for coming tonight. Thank you again for joining in our virtual celebration tonight. It has been an awe-inspiring night filled with visions of the future of mathematics. We want to close out the ceremony the way we opened it by asking you to solve a real-world math problem alongside of my friend and mathematician at large, James Tanton. Please use the chat feature on the right side of the screen to enter your thoughts and answers. Keep an eye out for your friends' posts as James works through the solution. Thanks again. Good to see everyone here at this virtual event. On behalf of the Mathematical Association of America and the American Mathematics Competitions Program, thank you for joining us tonight. We look forward to seeing you all again soon. Good night.